ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are looking at beginning our new unit, which is on polynomial functions. Um, and a skill that's really important for us to know is how to divide polynomials. So lesson 2.1 is going to be on dividing polynomials. I need you to take some good notes in your notebook or on a separate sheet of paper uh, and have it with you uh, for class next time I see you because those notes are going to help you out with uh, our practice that we are going to do in class. Okay. All right, example number one is on long division. And uh, if you notice the problem that I gave you right here is 107 divided by 4. And you're probably like, uh, why is she doing elementary school math on this for you video? Well, the reason why is because I want you to see the connections between actually doing the long division with what you know and doing division with uh, polynomials. So let's go ahead and do the division here. So remember, we're going to take uh, 4 right here, which is our divisor, right? Let's just refresh your brains with some of this vocabulary. We're going to see how many times it goes into 107, which is our dividend. And then whatever we get is our answer. This is going to be our quotient, OK? So how many times does 4 go into 1? It doesn't. How many times does 4 go into 10? It goes in 2 times. And then we do 2 times 4, which is 8. We subtract uh, 8 from 10, so we end up getting 2. We bring down the 7. We figure out how many times 4 goes into 27. Well, 4 goes into 27 6 times, so 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract it, we get 3. This 3 right here is called our remainder. Okay, again, what does this have to do with our um, uh, polynomials? You'll see right now. Okay, so let's take a look at this example right here. We are going to solve this problem right here using long division. So go ahead and copy it down. If you need to um, pause the video to get it down, go ahead and do so. And then we're going to talk about how to do this. Okay. So uh, remember, this right here is called our dividend. All right, and we're dividing by x minus 3, so this is our divisor. OK, and we're going to use long division to figure this out. So I want to figure out how many times does x minus 3 go into 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1. Now, when I do any type of long division, this number right here, this dividend, has to be written in descending order. So am I going from the highest exponent to the lowest exponent? Absolutely. So I can go ahead and do my division. So let's figure this out. How many times does just this x go into 3x cubed? So I'm going to divide 3x cubed by x. And I'm going to see that it goes in 3x squared times. So this right here, I know it goes in 3x squared times. Now I'm going to do my multiplication, and I have to multiply this 3x squared by every single term that we have here. So when I multiply 3x squared by x, I get 3x cubed. Okay, And then when I multiply uh, 3x squared by negative 3, I get minus 9x squared. And then I have to subtract these pieces right here, exactly like we did right here. We figured out that 4 goes into 10 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract it, we get a 2. Okay? So let's go ahead and do our subtraction right here. Now, every time we do our division, our first term that we subtract right here should cancel out. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed does cancel out. I get nothing. And here, negative 5x squared minus negative 9x squared would give me 4x squared, okay? And then I figure out how many, uh, uh, sorry, then I have to bring down this minus 7x. And if you want to, you can bring down the minus 1. It's up to you. I just bring down one term, but you can bring down the whole entire expression if you want. The next thing I need to do is figure out how many times this x right here will go into this 4x squared. Just like right here, we figured out how many times does this 4 go into this 27. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our division right here. So I'm going to take my 4x squared, and I'm going to divide that by x. And I know that 4x squared divided by x is going to give me 4x. 
okay? So right here, I know that this uh, term right here is going to be plus 4x. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm, I'm going to multiply the 4x by the x and the 4x by the negative 3. So 4x times x is 4x squared, all right? And then 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Now I want to subtract these answers right here. So when I subtract these answers, 4x squared minus 4x squared, uh, these will cancel out. And then negative 7x minus negative 12x means negative 7x plus 12x, which is 5x, okay? And then I bring down the negative 1. And lastly, I'm going to see, well, how many times does um, x right here go into this 5x? So 5x divided by x should just give me 5. So I know right here that this should be plus 5. So then 5 goes into, uh, 5 times x is 5x, okay? And same thing, I'm going to multiply this 5 through to everybody. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. When I subtract this here, the 5x is cancel, and then I end up getting negative 1 minus negative 15, which is positive 14. This right here is called my remainder, okay? I've got my answer right here, my quotient of this division problem is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. So that's my answer with a remainder of 14. That's part of my answer as well, okay? So um, just a quick summary statement right here, we can say that our original problem, which is 3x cubed, our original expression, 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1 is equal to um, our first factor, which was x minus 3 right here, multiplied by the other factor, which is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 with a remainder of 14. Okay, right, so now we can um, go ahead and double check to make sure that this really works. Um, and by the way, this answer right here is just like me saying um, in this example right here that uh, uh, I can say that 107 is equal to 4 times 26 with a remainder of 3. Okay, so let's just double check to make sure that this is really true. So we're going to go ahead and distribute this x minus 3 through to this piece right here and then add 14. So when I multiply x by 3x squared, I end up getting 3x to the power of 3. And then when I multiply x by 4x, I get 4x squared. Multiply this x through, I get plus 5x, okay? Then I'm going to distribute this negative 3 through, I get minus 9x squared. Here I get minus 12x, and here I get minus 15, and I still have this plus 14 right here, so I'm just going to copy that down. So now let's see what we end up getting when we put things together. So this 3x cubed doesn't combine with anything, so I'm going to write 3x cubed. Um, this 4x squared and this minus 9x squared go together, I get minus 5x squared. 5x and negative 12x gives me negative 7x, and then negative 15 plus 14 gives me uh, the minus 1 that I'm looking for. So it does match up. These two expressions right here are equivalent to each other, okay? And this is going to really help us out once we start doing um, some function work with our, polynomial, with our polynomials, some graphing, all that kind of stuff. Mathematicians are always looking for shortcuts, shorter ways to do some types of division. So let's take a look at uh, an example of some synthetic division right here. Now, something that you need to be aware of is that synthetic division will only work if we are dividing by a factor that is in the format x minus a, okay? So right here, in this example right here, we can say that the a value is equal to 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this synthetic division and let's see if we end up getting the same answer. So synthetic division, what we end up doing is we create a chart and it, um, it's the, it kind of looks like a division uh, operator, but it's going to be upside down. And what we do is we take the coefficients of all of our um, terms right here 
and the coefficients have to be in descending order. So if we have x cubed first, then I have to write the coefficient of x cubed, which is 3. So then once I do x cubed, I have to do x squared next, so I put negative 5. Once I do x squared, the next thing I do is uh, my x value, which is negative 7, or my power of 1, and then I do my power of 0. Now, if there is a term that is skipped, let's say, for example, there was no net minus 7x here, then you would have to put a 0 here, just so that you guys are aware, okay? And we'll talk about specific examples like that in class. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to figure out right here um, what number goes on the outside. It's my a value. So since a was 3, I'm going to put 3 on the outside. Okay, so how do I do my synthetic division? The first thing I'm going to do is I always bring down my first coefficient. No matter what power it is, whatever my leading coefficient is, I bring it down. Okay, then I'm going to multiply this value, this uh, coefficient here, by my a value. So 3 times 3 is 9, okay? So then, right here, I'm going to add these values together. So negative 5 plus 9 right here is 4. Same thing, I'm going to multiply right here. So when I multiply 4 times 3, I get 12. Add these guys together, I get 5. And I'm going to multiply 5 by 3, I get 15. Add these guys together, I get 14. So this right here, these are the coefficients of my quotient. And I'm going to work backwards to figure out what my highest exponent is. So right here, this is going to now be the power of 0 power of 1, so this is to the power of 2, which means that my quotient is going to be 3x squared plus 4x plus 5, which is exactly what we got when we did this before. In case you didn't notice, it's the exact same problem that we had originally right here. So we got 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 as our answer here with a remainder of 14. So let's see what we got when we did our uh, synthetic division. We also got 3x squared plus 4x plus 5, and we still had right here our remainder of 14 right here. Okay, so that's another way that we can do this. Um, but remember, we need uh, the factor to be in the format x minus a. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do this question right here. Here's an example that we have where we need to find the remainder of this division problem right here. Now, when I set up my division problem, remember, both of these need to be written in descending order. Okay, otherwise it's going to be a lot harder for us to do our division. Just like if I told you divide 104 by 7, we're not going to put a 7 here and then put 410 right here. It doesn't make sense. We have to put our hundreds, tens, and then ones first. So the same thing is true of this example right here. So let's go ahead and do our division right here. When I do my division, let's put this in descending order first. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1, okay? And then over here... I'm going to have, in descending order, x to the power of 4, right? That's my highest degree, minus, I've got 2x cubed. Now be really careful, I don't have any x squareds. So I'm going to write plus 0x squared because I don't have any x squareds in this expression right here, okay? Plus 5x, that comes next, plus 3, okay? So, okay. So I'm going to look at my first term here and my first term here. I'm going to figure out how many times does x squared go into x to the power of 4. Well, let's go ahead and do our division. And eventually, you're not going to need to do this division on the side. You're going to know this in your head. So x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 2 is x squared, or x to the power of 2. So it goes in 1x squared times. So I'm going to put it on top of my x squared. I'm just going to line up my uh, places. So then I have to multiply. So x squared times x squared is x to the power of 4. x squared times 2x is 2x uh, to the power of 3. And x squared times 1 is just x squared. I'm going to subtract these values. Be really careful when you're subtracting. So these x to the power of 4 is cancel. Negative 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is negative 4 
x cubed, right? And then if I do um, x squared, or sorry, excuse me, 0x squared minus 1x squared, I get negative 1x squared. And then I'm going to bring down the plus 5x, okay? And then we're going to repeat the same process. So how many times does this x squared go into negative 4x cubed? Well, let's figure that out. It should go in negative 4x times. So I'm going to put put negative 4x right here, and negative 4x times x squared is negative 4x cubed. Negative 4x times 2x is negative um, 8x squared, and then negative 4x times 1 right here should give me negative 4x. So let's go ahead and subtract these values and see what we end up getting right here. So when I subtract, I end up getting uh, the 4x cubes will cancel each other out, and then negative 1x squared plus, this becomes plus 8x squared, is 7x squared, okay? And then 5x, this becomes plus 4x, becomes plus 9x, okay? Then I'm going to bring down the 3. And it's a positive 3, so I'm going to write plus 3. So now how many times does um, x squared right here go into the 7x squared? So 7x squared over x squared is just 7. So I know it goes in 7 times. So 7 times x squared is 7x squared. 7 times 2x is 14x. And then 7 times 1 is 7, positive 7. So I'm going to subtract these values right here. So the 7x squared cancel. This becomes 9x minus 14x, which is negative 5x. And then this becomes 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. Now, x squared cannot go into negative 5x without negative exponents, which we don't want. So this is as far as I can go. Therefore, my remainder is negative 5x minus 4. OK? Now let's use synthetic division to divide this expression by x plus 2. And remember, it has to be in the format x minus a, which it is. In this example, our a value is negative 2, okay? But first things first, I need to write this in descending order. So it's x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed, all right? Now there's no x squared term here at all, so I'm going to say plus 0x squared plus 13x minus 6, and that's getting divided by x plus 2. So let's go ahead and set up our uh, synthetic division chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make my chart right here, and I'm going to put my coefficients of my um, number, my expression that's being divided right here. So I'm going to put 1 here, then I'm going to put negative 2, and I'll put 0, and then 13, and then negative 6, okay? And I am dividing by x plus 2, so I put my a value here, I'm dividing by negative 2, okay? Now remember, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring down this 1. And then I'm going to multiply 1 by negative 2, I get negative 2, okay? So then add these two values together, I get negative 4. Multiply negative 4 by negative 2, I get 8. Add the 0 and the 8 together, you get 8. Then multiply 8 by negative 2, I get negative 16. Add these together, I get negative 3. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. So then you add those together, you get 0. So now we're going to talk about what all this stuff means. Remember, this right here is a remainder. This is our 0 degree term, our 1 degree term, our 2 degree term, and our 3 degree term. So this right here means that we get x to the power of 3 sorry, yeah, 1x to the power of 3, and then minus 4x to the power of 2. This 8 means I've got plus 8x, and then here my 0 term is minus 3, so this is my answer with a remainder of 0. So x plus 2 goes perfectly evenly into this expression right here. Okay, now again, mathematicians are always looking for shortcuts. So is there another way that I can find this remainder right here easily without having to do any type of division, whether it's regular long division or synthetic division? There is, and that's called the remainder theorem. So this remainder theorem says when a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus a, 
the remainder is equal to f of a. If the remainder is 0, then x minus a is a factor of the polynomial. And this can be used to help factor polynomials, okay? So to find a, set the factor x minus a equal to 0. So I'm going to ask a similar question. Instead of using synthetic division to divide this, I'm going to ask myself, is x plus 2 a factor of this function right here. Well, this function right here is exactly the same as the expression that we had in this example right here. So we should get, yes, there is, this x plus 2 right here is a factor because the remainder is 0. You can divide it out evenly, but let's check to see if it works. And remember, it says set x minus a equal to 0. So I'm going to set x plus 2 equal to 0, which means that x equals uh, negative 2, which means that my um, a value is negative 2. So I'm going to find f of negative 2. So let's go ahead and do this. This is going to be 13 times negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 to the power of 4 minus 6. Okay, so I end up getting f of negative 2 is equal to negative 26 because 13 times negative 2 is negative 26, right? Negative 2 cubed is negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16, okay? Negative 2 to the power of 4 is also positive 16 minus 6. Add it all together, I get f of negative 2 equals 0. This, according to the remainder theorem, is my remainder. And if there's a remainder of 0, then x plus 2 is a factor. So I can say, therefore x plus 2 is a factor of 13x minus 2x cubed plus x to the power of 4 minus 6, which we already figured out using synthetic division. So we've got, we're starting to build a lot of strategies that we can use to help us with our polynomial functions. Okay, thanks for hanging in there. We're going to pull it all together right here in this last example. So example number 6. 2x plus 3 is one factor of this function. Determine the other factors as well as the x-intercepts. So I know that f of x equals 6x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 15 already has a factor of 2x plus 3. But the question is, what belongs inside of here? What's the other factor? Well, in order to be able to do that, I have to do some division, okay? So I'm going to do some long division to figure this out. So I'm going to figure out how many times does 2x plus 3 go into 6x cubed plus 5x squared minus 16x minus 15. So let's go ahead and do our long division. Well, 2x will go into 6x cubed. I know it'll go in uh, 3x squared times, right? So I know right here that this should end up being uh, 3x squared. By the way, when I'm done, I should know that I get a remainder of 0 because it tells me that it is already a factor. So there should be no remainders. So let's go ahead and multiply it. 3x squared times 2x, 6x cubed, and then 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. Subtract these values, you end up getting negative 4x squared, okay, because the 6x cubes cancel. Bring down the minus 16x. How many times does 2x go into negative 4x squared? It goes in negative 2x times, right? So negative 2x times 2x is negative 4x squared, and then negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x, and I'm going to subtract these values. Well, the 4x squared, the negative 4x squareds will cancel each other out, and then negative 16x uh, plus 6x is negative 10x, okay? Bring down this negative 15. How many times does 2x go into negative 10x? It goes in negative 5 times, so negative 5 times 2x should give me negative 10x, and then negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. This looks promising because they are identical. When I subtract them, I end up getting a remainder of 0, which is exactly what I want. So I know that what goes inside of these brackets right here is 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. Okay, 
So now that I've done that, I can keep going and I can keep doing some more division. However, the rest of this should be pretty easy for me. Now that I know that it's f of x equals 2x plus 3 times 3x squared minus 2x minus 5, I can go ahead and factor this expression right here. And I know that the first term should multiply out to give me 3x squared. So if I multiply 3x by x, I get 3x squared. Okay? And I also know that my last terms should multiply together to give me negative 5. So I'm just going to guess and check until it works for me. So I'm going to try a 5 here, and I'm going to try a 1 here. Well, this gives me 5x. This gives me 3x. I can get negative 2x if my 5x is negative. So I can do my factoring here. I know this is negative 5. I know this is positive 1. Let's double check to make sure this works. 3x times x is 3x squared. Um, these two factors right here, when I multiply them, I end up getting negative 5x and 3x. So that combines together to give me negative 2x. And then negative 5 times 1 multiplies to give me negative 5. So that all works right there. So I've completely factored uh, my example right here. So it says determine the other factors. So my other factors are 3x minus 5 as well as x plus 1. And now I'm going to use that to figure out what my x-intercepts are. Well, my x-intercepts occur when y is 0. So I'm going to replace f of x with 0. And I know that this is 2x plus 3, this is 3x minus 5, and that this is x plus 1. So I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. Okay? I have three factors. So I'm going to set three separate factors equal to 0. So I say 2x plus 3 equals 0. 3x minus 5 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0, okay? So then I just solve each one of these, subtract 3 from both sides, so I get x, uh, 2x equals negative 3, which means x is negative 3 over 2. Here I would add 5 to both sides, so I get 3x equals 5, so x equals 5 thirds, and here I would get x equals negative 1. So I can say, therefore, my x-intercepts, or the x-intercepts, are negative 3 over 2, 0, 5 over 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. Okay? I know this is a lot to take in, but this is really going to lay the, uh, the groundwork for us uh, for our polynomials unit, so make sure you really understand what we talked about. Thank you for sticking with me, and I will see you in class.